Hi there, Andy from SSL here, and thank you for joining me today as we take an in-depth look at the Bus Plus. In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about the Bus Plus, from connecting it up to your studio, walking through the front panel controls, as well as listening to some audio examples. So without further ado, let's jump in. If there is a single piece of analog processing equipment that is synonymous with SSL, then it just has to be the SSL bus compressor. From the very first commercially released SSL 4000B console in 1976, and through many generations of SSL desks that have followed since, the bus compressor has always been the stalwart of the console center section. In 1991, when we were taking our first steps into the analog outboard world, the FX384 saw the bus compressor put into rack mount form, meaning that even studios without SSL consoles could get in on the action. In 2002, the FX384 received a facelift, with a new silver front panel taking us into the XLogic era, and this was followed by the multi-channel 5.1 version the following year. In 2007, the bus compressor became available as a double width module for the x rack series, and in 2013, the bus compressor made its way into the ever-popular 500 series format, now complete with sidechain high-pass filter control. But even if you've never had chance to experience an analog SSL bus compressor, you will have undoubtedly come across it in plug-in form, perhaps by using our SSL native bus compressor. One thing is for sure though, throughout the course of music production history, the bus compressor has always been the de facto choice for gluing a mix together. For the past two and a bit years, we've been hard at work engineering the Bus Plus, on a mission to create the ultimate and most versatile incarnation of the bus compressor ever seen. The bedrock of the design remains faithful, as it always has done, to the original circuit. And using this base as a starting point, we've built upon it, adding a number of unique coloration options. If you need it to be clean and punchy like the XLogic version, it can be. If you need it to be gritty and grungy like an early 4K, it can do that also. Or even if you need something a little different, we've got you covered. To complement the new feature set, we sought to bring improvements that would benefit both recallability and technical performance. Firstly, this led to the decision to make the Bus Plus pot stepped. Every pot is either an 11 or 31 position step control, and this has the obvious advantage of making recalls easier. But there's actually more cleverness going on here. Step pots on their own may make recalls easier, but simply using them instead of continuous pots doesn't lead to any technical advantage per se, as they're still subject to the pot tolerances which can compromise stereo matching and the overall analogue performance. So we went further, coming up with an innovative approach to the implementation. On the Bus Plus, all the step pot positions are read by an onboard microcontroller, meaning that no audio passes through the pots themselves, and by doing this, we're no longer subject to the pot tolerances. The microcontroller's job is to translate the pot positions into precise information, which it then uses to control the analog circuitry. To be clear, the Bus Plus is 100% an analog circuit design. It's just managed in a clever way. This approach is extended to the front panel buttons, providing clean and reliable analog switching. In conjunction with the technical and general feature improvements, the Bus Plus also incorporates an all new dynamic analog equalizer section, which we've named the DEQ. The DEQ is a powerful two band dynamic EQ that's able to be placed either before or after the bus compressor. Many of you will be familiar with dynamic EQ plugins inside your door, but analog dynamic equalizers are few and far between. A dynamic EQ is a more intelligent form of EQ, which changes the gain of an EQ band proportionally in response to the signal level, once above a set threshold. It allows you to modify the contrast between background material, things below threshold, and forward material, things above threshold. The DEQ is built upon a specially adapted version of the bus compressor sidechain circuit, which contributes significantly to its powerful yet musical sonic character. Being able to use the DEQ in conjunction with the bus compressor 
makes for some very exciting dynamic and tonal options that we'll cover a little later in this video. Before we jump into the controls, let's take a quick look at the rear panel of the Bus Plus. On here, you'll find an IEC inlet and power switch. The Bus Plus uses an auto-ranging power supply, so simply connect this to your plug socket. All audio connections are presented on XLR. We've got the inputs here and the outputs here. Use these to hook up the Bus Plus as a hardware insert for your DAW, or indeed to attach it to the insert point of your mixing console or Fusion, for example. Also on the rear panel, you'll find some additional XLRs labeled external sidechain input. If you have an external signal you would like to have trigger the Bus Plus sidechain, this is where you connect that too. Below these connections, we have a pair of XLRs labeled external send. The signal leaving these connectors is a copy of the input signal. This allows you to copy the input signal, send it to an external processing unit like an EQ, and then return it to the external sidechain input. The first thing I'm going to do is take the Bus Plus out of bypass by pressing the channel 1 in button. In the centre of the Bus Plus, the mode button allows you to choose between four different modes of operation. The first one is called Classic Stereo. In this mode, the unit is working as a true stereo processor, with the controls on the left hand side of the unit determining the settings for both channels. The controls on the right hand side are simply disabled. Pressing the mode button once more will put the unit into some sidechain stereo mode. And this mode is similar to classic stereo, but with the difference that the sidechain signals are summed together. This makes the bus compressor more sensitive towards mono content in a stereo source. Have a go at switching between classic stereo and some sidechain stereo to see which you prefer. Here's a little tip. A short press and hold allows you to go backwards in your mode selection. Pressing the mode button once more, we can move into dual mono mode. This mode configures the bus compressor as two entirely independent mono processing engines, where the controls on the left hand side determine the settings for channel 1, and the controls on the right hand side determine the settings for channel 2. Pressing the mode key once more will put you into mid side mode. In this mode, a stereo signal passes through an encode decode mid side circuit allowing you to process the mid signal with the controls on the left hand side whilst processing the side signal differently with the right hand side controls. This mode is a great tool for mastering engineers. And here's another tip. Whilst in this mode, press and hold the channel in buttons to be able to solo either the mid or the side signal. Let's take a closer look at the bus compressor. We can see many familiar controls, including threshold, ratio, attack, release, makeup gain, and a sidechain high pass filter. In addition to this, you'll be pleased to see a mix control for the first time. At the top of the unit, you'll find three buttons labeled low THD, FB, and 4K mode, which may not be so familiar as these buttons are new and unique to the bus plus. To kick off, Let's take a look at the bus compressor in familiar territory, doing a few dB of gain reduction across this mix of a song called Foxholes by Shadow Mountains. The controls are set for a ratio of 4 to 1, attack is 10 milliseconds, and release is in auto. To begin with, we'll have 4K mode disabled, in which case the bus compressor is operating in a balanced configuration optimised for low noise and distortion. This is identical to all modern SSL bus compressor implementations, like the ones found in our Duality and AWS consoles. We'll then engage 4K mode, which will do a couple of things. Firstly, it changes the operation of the VCA from balanced to unbalanced, matching how the bus compressor in a 4000 series console was implemented. And secondly, it introduces a variable amount of harmonic distortion via the VCA. These two factors combine to allow for a slightly more coloured sound. I'll also show you how pressing and holding the 4K mode button, we can use the buttons to the left and the right to decrease or increase the distortion level, with the colour of the button indicating the level of distortion. My 
As you could hear, when we isolated the drums and increased the distortion, 4K Mo can get really quite crunchy. This kind of thing can be cool when used in conjunction with the mix control. On this mix, I preferred using it a little more subtly to add some thickness to the sound. Now, let's take a look at the FB button, which is short for feedback. Although the bus compressor sidechain per se has a feedback topology, the signal feeding into the sidechain is derived from a feed forward position. Engaging the feedback button changes this so that the signal feeding the sidechain comes from after the VCA in the audio path. This results in a more relaxed style of compression in contrast to the traditional grab of the bus compressor. To demonstrate, we're going to see the effect it has on this mix I'm working on for a different artist. It's also worth pointing out that on this mix, I'm using a 15 millisecond attack time and a 150 millisecond release, both of which are new options on the Bus Plus. You'll notice that due to the more relaxed behavior of feedback mode, when I switch to normal mode, I'll need to readjust the threshold a little, matching up the gain reduction like for like. I love the feel of feedback mode on this mix. Even when doing similar levels of gain reduction, having less grab felt like the right option here. Now, let's take a look at the low THD button, which is another useful sonic option to have at your disposal. Most compressors by their nature start distorting low frequencies before high ones, particularly when set to fast release times. Sometimes this forms part of the desirable analog character, but other times it can be counterproductive. Pressing the low THD button on the bus plus introduces a special circuit modification in the sidechain, which helps to limit the amount of low frequency distortion created. On this beat, by all caps, I'm using the bus compressor on its fastest release, the new 50 millisecond option, to exaggerate what low THD brings to the table. Low THD nicely restores that deep bottom end on the kick and bass that was just getting a little sucked out when it wasn't engaged. Next, let's have a little bit of fun smashing up some drums. In doing so, we'll take a look at some of the new negative ratio options we have available on the Bus Plus. A negative ratio is a setting whereby the output signal level is actually reduced once it exceeds the threshold to a level that falls beneath that of the threshold. 
Negative ratios can be used to better control material featuring extremely loud signals, or better still, for creative pumping effects. Let's take a listen to how we can create an explosive parallel drum sound using negative ratios. You can really hear how that snare drum is pulled in when using the negative ratio, especially in comparison to the 10 to 1 ratio. Very smashy indeed. Before we move on to exploring the dynamic EQ, let's cover a few more operational bits and pieces, starting with the makeup gain. In the Bus Plus, we've implemented this stage using the same proprietary MDAC technology as found in our Duality and AWS consoles, allowing for super precise control. By default, each step corresponds to 1 dB, but a press and hold on the makeup gain changes to fine mode, which is in steps of 0.5 dB. It's also worth mentioning that a simple push on the makeup gain pop will change the processing order of the unit. By default, the bus compressor comes before the DEQ, but you can change this to be afterwards like I just did. Finally, the external sidechain input options can be accessed by pressing on the sidechain high pass filter control. This will toggle you through selecting the external sidechain inputs as the source for the bus compressor, the DEQ, or both. The DEQ is a powerful two-band dynamic equaliser. The pots relating to the DEQ can easily be identified by their black caps. At the heart of the DEQ are the LF low frequency and HF high frequency dynamic controls. Pressing on a band will toggle it on or off. The shelving filter for the LF band is initially set to 60 Hz, whilst the HF band is set to 6 kHz. You can change these frequencies, which we'll cover shortly. Turning the control clockwise from the centre dials in an expansion effect, and turning the control anti-clockwise from the centre dials in a compression effect. By turning the control in either scenario, you are effectively lowering the threshold of that band's dynamic EQ. How far you need to turn it before either expansion or compression occurs will of course be dependent on the incoming signal level. The LF and HF DEQ controls are accompanied by tricolour LEDs, indicating how much dynamic EQ is being applied. In addition to the dynamic controls, you have a pot labelled LF gain here and LF slash HF gain here. The LF gain control on the left hand side of the unit applies a plus minus 10 dB boost or cut of regular non dynamic EQ. Think of this like a makeup gain for the LF band. The LF slash HF gain control on the right hand side is also a band makeup control, but the mode of the bus plus determines whether this is acting on the LF or the HF band. If you're working in a stereo mode, then this control is for the HF band, and this is indicated by a red LED here. Please note that this is the only control on the right hand side which is active when you're using the unit in stereo. Alternatively, if you're working in dual mono or mid side mode, this control acts on the LF band, and the LED in this scenario is simply reflecting whether or not G series mode is active. Pushing the LF gain control will toggle G series mode on, turning the LED green. When the EQ is in G series mode, the filters are changed from first order to second and an amount of overshoot undershoot is added to the shelving filters above the frequency cutoff point, similar to that found on SSL G Series EQs.
The HF button changes the filter type from shelf to bell for the HF band. Switching to this also changes the available frequency points, allowing you to apply EQ in the critical upper mid-range area. The HF fast button changes the time constants of the HF band to be 1 millisecond attack, 50 millisecond release. When this is not active, the nominal settings are 3 millisecond attack and 50 millisecond release. Pressing and holding the switch allows for a third auto setting to be chosen. In this case, the button lights magenta. The LF fast button changes the time constants of the LF band to be 10 millisecond attack, 50 millisecond release. When it's not active, the nominal settings are 30 millisecond attack and 100 millisecond release. And once again, pressing and holding this switch allows for a third auto setting to be chosen. Now we've described the DEQ functions, let's take a look at using the DEQ to enhance this beat from all caps. I really like the punch of the DEQ here, opting for the auto setting for the LF band and the nominal setting for the HF. For each band of the DEQ, 16 different frequency points can be chosen from. To adjust the frequency, press and hold on the band you want to change. The front panel meters will start flashing. The left hand meter is used to indicate the selected frequency. Simply use the HF fast button to move the frequency point upwards, or use the LF fast button to move it down. This image shows how the meter positions relate to the chosen frequency. Whilst you're in this setup mode, you can also adjust the range parameter with its setting indicated by the right hand meter. Range allows you to restrict the maximum amount of expansion or compression for each band. Usefully, the meter position corresponds directly to the range value. To alter the range, use the right hand HF and LF fast buttons to decrease or increase the setting. This would limit the range to 8 dB here, for example. When you're done making the adjustments, simply press and hold the band's controls once again to release from this setup mode. It's really handy to know that the HF bell has its own set of frequency points that are different to the HF shelf. To adjust the selected frequency of the bell, just make sure that the HF bell button is engaged before entering the setup mode. Let's take another audio example this time with the DEQ bands compressing a drum subgroup. So you heard here how I used the regular LF and HF gains to add in some boom and top end, but then use the dynamics controls to compress it.
It's a really nice way of bringing out the lively roominess of the drums in a way that standard EQ alone can't achieve. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the Bus Plus. Don't forget, all the information covered here and a load more is available on the Bus Plus product pages and in the user guide. So until next time, goodbye.